One of the biggest challenges when you start your personal knowledge journey is that it's really hard to come up with original ideas when you're consuming content that is written by other people. So you read an article and you might find that actually you don't have anything to add because it's a new subject to you. It's something that you don't know what's right and what's wrong. You don't know where basically to take it. So you start taking sections, highlighting sections of that original article, or it could be a book or something, and you feel like that you're just paraphrasing another author or another researcher, it's someone else's work. And it's quite, it's quite challenging to, to basically be someone who can project your own ideas into the world when you feel like that you're only reflecting what other people have already said. So in today's video, we're gonna be covering how to solve that problem. And it's a concept that I've come up with that looks at DNA and how that has generated originality from something that came before. So let's dive right in. So the concept of this I call is evolve your thinking and it's looking at how evolution has used DNA to essentially create something that's original. So if we break it down, in biology you have DNA which essentially between each generation of an organism it uses the DNA to create the, uh, the basis of the next generation. However, we obviously aren't always the same in evolution. Things evolve over time, all the way back from the single-celled organisms to fully functioning humans, right? You can see that we're quite a way away from the original DNA of that single-celled organism. So what we look at here is how does DNA create something original when in theory, it only has the previous generation to base it on. So it uses two techniques. One of those is to take the DNA from two parents and mix them together. And we'll come to that in our thinking and our note taking in a moment, but where you take two parents and you synthesize new DNA based on that. And this is why uh, if you have a zoo with a, a, an endangered species of, of animal, what they will do is they'll usually take one of their animal and breed it with one from another zoo, maybe another part of the world, so they get the variants of that DNA. So there's that aspect, you take two parents, but there's also another thing that DNA does, is it can introduce errors. And what this is, is as it processes the DNA, there are errors. So the offspring is not an exact replica of the parent. And sometimes that can basically have no impact on the child. Sometimes it could have an adverse impact on the child where they can't survive, or sometimes it has an evolutionary advantage where that DNA mutation tips the balance of it surviving better than its peers, and therefore it can reproduce more. And that's how evolution works. Those errors that come in and the mixing of DNA creates enough where the ones that survive are the ones that, that continue. Biology has a really interesting way of taking information and mutating it so that you can synthesize something new which may or may not be advantageous. How do we apply that then to our thinking? So it's quite straightforward. When we consume content, when we listen to discussions and we look at ideas, what we're doing is we are taking the, the DNA of that idea and we're reprocessing it. And sometimes we will take that idea and we'll project it back out in our writing and our understanding, and we won't change it. Another idea is where you take an idea, but you combine it with other ideas. And if you're a polymath, for example, you might have disciplines in two different fields and you start connecting them together. And I think this is extremely powerful. Entrepreneurs do this quite often where they'll have a discipline in one area and apply it to another. Take um, Tesla, for example, you could look at it as a car company or you could look at it as a software company. And depending on which one you look at, we'll have vastly different ways of approaching things. So here in our note taking, and especially with the Zettelkasten, and what you can do is you can start writing atomic notes on one thing and then you can start writing atomic notes on another thing. And then you can start looking at how to cross pollinate those ideas. And this is something that I, I absolutely love doing. Um, you know, if I'm looking at, um, it could be something about programmer efficiency, how programmers uh, 
um, create fewer bugs in their code. And then you start thinking about, okay, well, how would that relate to nutrition? What do programmers eat and drink? How does that affect their cognitive ability to focus? And does that have an impact? So one could start researching the question, what nutrition is better to create more efficient programmers? Um, you see, that's just completely a random thought I've had right now where I can take two different things, bring them together and start asking different questions. And weirdly, this whole concept of DNA and uh, note-taking was exactly that. I was walking down the street where I was looking at a car and I've been thinking about like, well, what is innovation in, in cars? And you look at a car and you think you have all these manufacturers making cars, but yet they all look the same. If I was an alien species looking at a car, they would all look the same. They have four wheels. They have a steering wheel, generally five seats. Um, yes, there are variances, the engine's in the front or the shape of it is in the front for aerodynamics. And, and you start thinking, how is it that different companies can independently manufacture vehicles, but they all look the same? And the answer is that they've taken those ideas from the previous generation, that the, there is no vehicle that is uh, designed in a vacuum, that, that solved problems are inherited and other ones are challenged. Um, and I thought that was really interesting that without cars essentially passing on DNA, they pass on information. And it's the ideas that represent a car, the architect architecture, the, um, the engineering, the aerodynamics, all these ideas come together at a new vehicle. So I, so I really found that fascinating. And I thought this is exactly what knowledge management is about. You take ideas from those who have come before you and you start evolving them. And that's exactly what DNA does. So that's how I came up with the, uh, with the concept there. But the other aspect that you can come up with in your note taking is deliberate mutations. So rather than taking just two, two different things and pollinating them together and seeing if that creates an original idea, take one idea and deliberately try to break it down and tweak essentially the genetic code of that idea. And the, the example I've came up with this is if I was thinking about mindset as a topic that I wanted to research and teach and all those things, um, yes, I can pollinate that into mindset and sport, mindset and education, all these things. Or I could just take it in isolation and break it down. What, what is a mindset? It is a way of thinking that is your default, is, is, your, is set in stone. So, uh, so I can take like, well, set. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break this down, set as in like concrete, to put something. I can set something in concrete. And so... If you can set something, how do you change something? So here I'm mutating this idea. Okay, so in order to change something that's set in concrete, you have to essentially break it out of the concrete so you can change it. So how do you do that? Well, you can go in forcefully with a pneumatic drill, or you can use some kind of, I don't know, maybe melt it or something like that. If it's set in ice, you melt it rather than chip it away, for example. So there are two different ways. Well, what does it mean to use a forceful way to break it or a, a more subtle way, like using temperature? Well, one of those can create more devastation, it can fracture the thing. So here I'm mutating this idea through, just from the word mindset and sort of the topic, where I can say, okay, we have a mindset. It's something that's set. We want to change a mindset. There are two ways we can do that. We can go in forcefully or we can go in gradually. And now you start thinking about what if I wanted to influence and change someone's mindset or change my own mindset? Do I go in hard and try and break it and have a, you know, a moment of crisis where suddenly you rebuild your own understanding? Or do I go in gradually? And both of those would be very different techniques. And uh, if you're a mentor uh, or someone who's trying to help someone else, if you try and go in too forcefully, they may, they may reject, they may push back against what you're trying to do rather than doing it over time. So that's just an example where I've taken one idea and I just played with it and I've mutated it and I've come up with a new concept, which now I can start building more thinking around that. How do you change someone's mind? What research 
uh, has shown what's effective, what's not. Should you change someone's mind? You know, there's the ethical questions that are around it, and all these things can now start coming together. And as an educator um, here on YouTube, I have to think about how I can get my ideas across so that it can help you, but in a way that isn't basically too forceful or too gradual. It's got to be the right balance. And through that process, I'll figure out what works and what doesn't. So yeah, basically to conclude, if you want to have original ideas, we can take inspiration from DNA where you can do a couple of things. You can take two different ideas and pollinate them together, bring their, their DNA together and spark new ideas. And the example I gave there was how to make more efficient programmers through changing diet and nutrition. Or you can create deliberate mutations where you start looking at it from really interesting ways, where, where you're deliberately doing things that don't make sense. Look at the word, break the word down, start um, thinking about it in terms of the negative. For example, um, uh, you know, we say personal debt is bad. Well, let's look at it in the negative. When is personal debt good? For example, that could be a mutation on your thinking. And there's no limit to what you can and can't do. Some of it will be complete nonsense, but some of it could be something really quite interesting. And that's, a, that's just a nice way to take your knowledge journey, consume other content, but be original with it and start leaning into the things that you feel are important to you and how you can kind of tap into that and, and you know, pull on that thread and suddenly you'll start finding your own voice in your own writing and your own thinking. And I think that's really powerful. So if you like this video, then do consider subscribing and giving it a like that supports the channel immensely. And uh, yeah, basically I'm gonna be creating more content around these ways of thinking, the stuff that I'm learning that's fascinating. I'm gonna try and teach it in a way that basically is actionable for you to put into practice in your own knowledge journey. Thank you.